Cranbridge School is the only special school in Torvineborough and we cater for pupils who are aged two year olds right through to 19 year olds, all of whom have severe learning difficulties and complex needs. Our main site is in Sebastopol and has been there since the early 70s and um, the opportunity to come to Penny Garn School came up, this is our third year, came up two years ago and the idea behind it was that it would offer pupils in our school the opportunity to be educated alongside mainstream peers and that would offer opportunities to encourage their language development and social development that they wouldn't otherwise have if they remained within the special school environment. My target is exercise, and, yeah. and I achieved it by doing trampolining. Yeah, you worked really hard on a big improvement in trampolining, didn't you? Within the primary setting back at Sebastopol in the main site, we used to send children out to the local primary schools um, before we started this provision here. Because the children were um, benefiting from it, and we could see that they were improving, and they were improving their assessment levels, that we decided that it would be a good idea to try it, to have a provision on a mainstream site so that they had it all day rather than just going out for once a week. Often when these, uh, the idea of inclusion is broached with parents and staff, because they're very secure within the special school environment, uh, as a sort of family unit really, special schools are all very close environments, to think about actually sort of splitting that environment and that school community across two settings uh, within a mainstream environment uh, did make people feel a bit nervous, particularly parents, who's obviously the security and happiness of their child is their first thought, and also staff who've worked within Cranbridge School for many years to be across the borough from the main site. So it was something that we thought about and talked about together before we um, actually took the step of moving, moving up. When you were told that they were thinking of moving Emily from an exclusive school which catered exclusively for children with learning difficulties to an integrated school, how did you feel? How did you react then? Very anxious, very anxious. My husband and I um, I got quite upset about it, thinking, well, we'd settled on Crownbridge because we'd looked at a couple of other provisions for Emily and we settled on Crownbridge. So we were thinking that's where Emily would stay right up until she was 19 um, and she would be looked after lovely there and um, have all the care she needed there. But so when we did find out that she might be moved to a placement in a mainstream school, um, it's not really what we wanted. What were you worried about in particular? Um, the mainstream children, Emily's interaction with them. Um, whether or not they would accept Emily and her class peers. Was there some trepidation on the part of the parents who already had children in the school? Uh, yes, if I'm quite honest with you. <clears throat> there, there was quite a high level of reticence from just a, f a few parents uh, who voiced their concern. Um, but we tried to overcome their issues by engaging them from the outset speaking to them about it, holding public meetings and trying to break down the barriers. As we've come along the journey together, uh, the nerves of staff and parents alike have been put to rest as we've taken step by step approach to developing the partnership. So when we first came, rather than joining in everything at once, I think Anne Roberts, myself, discussed it and thought that we'd just start small and build in confidence and then just saw what opportunities came up and together plan that we take step by step and, and as we felt more confident, try new things. Before we integrated into, into this environment, Emily was just in a Key Stage 2 class at Crownbridge. When we moved here, she then became part of um, some of the mainstream classes because she's um, just a little bit more capable than some of her other pupils, so she really gained from having the support of other, other children around her. She's been able to get the, the um, I suppose, the peer support that you don't always get in a, in a complete special needs class. Do Emily's special requirements, do they hold the rest of the group back in any way? No, purely because she has streamed at her level. Well done. Well done. We were worried about perhaps she'd be put into a mainstream classroom without her assistance with her because that's who she looked up to for her security and her confidence. Um, so no, we weren't very happy about it to initially to start off with, no. He says if he turns around, would you give him a little wave and say hello Tufty? Hello Tufty. Oh. I work with Luke 
in uh, inclusion in Pennygan School. I'm on a one-to-one -one with him, which means in the morning we go into Pennygan and we uh, integrate with all the children in mainstream nursery. Um, I'm by his side almost all morning, so that um, if he needs any help, I'm there with him. Um, he's got urine problems, he's got eyesight problems, so I mean, I'm sort of just his one-to-one -one to make sure that if the children want to do anything with him, he's there. Does this integration with, with children from the, the mainstream school, does that help him? I think it does, yeah. It's, um, um, mostly because he's playing alongside them, he's picking up their conversations, he's, he's playing exactly like they play, so I mean if they're talking about things, he's talking with them, um, it's just great. And yeah. how do they react to him? Um, at first they were a bit curious, but it's just fine now because they're all playing with him. He comes in in the morning, they wave to him, they call his name, they say, morning Luke, are you coming in? And he says yes. So. It's just lovely for him. And then outside, he's playing alongside them. He's running with them. I mean, he's got a few problems, but he's fine. He's, he keeps up with them. He's, um, he plays alongside them with all their toys. He's on the bikes with them. So, and they all look after him. It's, it's really nice. So what kind of successes have you seen with, with Crownbridge children that they may not have actually have enjoyed had they stayed on, on the old site? Well, some of them might be individual um, development issues. So, for instance, their language, their social skills that we were trying to develop within the special school environment, but they needed the support of more able peers to extend that. So, for instance, Margaret is able to join lessons, so she's able to progress in terms of illiteracy and numeracy alongside more able pupils. So that gives her a little push to develop further in um, academic and basic skills. Well done. And on the playground, she's able to become more independent away from adults and joining in playing games with her mainstream friends. Another example would be Kian, who, um, because of his um, diagnosis of autism, has difficulty with communication and social interaction. So that can lead him to stay in his own little world and not really um, show a lot of interest in joining in with others. But through the activities like BMX bike riding, some of the physical activities that he thrives on, that's been able, given him opportunities to join in with others. To He's now beginning to speak to people that he didn't speak to before. He goes over and initiates interactions with mainstream children. He joins in a sort of team group approach with the children calling their names and joining in with the camaraderie of activities. Now all those things wouldn't have been possible on the main site of our special school in Sebastopol. And how have the pupils in your school reacted to the arrival of children with learning difficulties? Completely taken it in their stride. Um, they've been really interested and, and I think it's just, it's such a huge compliment to my staff and to the staff at Crown Bridge who've, who've worked really hard to make it work. And um, again, it's about breaking down the barriers for children as well. They want to help. There's, there's no mystery around why people are in wheelchairs. They're quite confident to go up and, and um, ask if they can you know, wheel Jamie around or Kane if they see them on the yard, can they wheel them around? Um, and it, it just really has demystified the whole, the whole issue really. When we arrived at, at Pentagon School, we arrived with lots of equipment, lots of hoists, hoists and, and, and yeah, and, and children in wheelchairs, which which weren't you know weren't common to see around. Um, lo loads of things we had with us, and and we just found that within the first few weeks there was hundreds of questions. Um, why is it? Why have you got this? And what do you need that for? And why do they go there? And why do they do this? So we basically wanted to sort of create a six-week course that address some of those issues for the pupils at Penny Garn to be able to come and talk to us um, and learn about our Crown Bridge pupils. So hopefully that we could build the bridge and, and develop relationships so that they would be aware of, of why we, we're here. Some are deaf, like we can just always like sign, like help, can I have 
help please us good it's led by the children themselves so every week when they come in if they've got burning issues we'll deal with that first and then there's sort of two stages of activities the first stage would be thinking activities where they'd ask them to think about special people who help them and then we'd take them a level higher what sort of people do you think crown bridge children need to help them and then it would go on to a practical activity where we'd to try and develop some empathy perhaps put gloves on them perhaps put um, a fold over so a they couldn't fold, see yeah. and then give them a bar of chocolate which is really cruel a knife and fork say go on eat it and then you can feel what it's like to have a physical disability and for another mother with, with a, a child with learning difficulties who's just coming up to going to school age, what would you say? Would you recommend this sort of Definitely, definitely. I'm going to feel nervous at first and anxious like I was, but put your trust in the teachers, put your trust in the assistants because they're all doing a marvellous job. We were very pleased after she moved up here. We could see a difference in Emily in the first couple of weeks. And I suppose the million dollar question, has it worked? Yeah, well has it worked? I guess the measure of that is by watching the pupils because you can see the pupils of Crown Bridge and the Pentagon children with big smiles on their faces so they seem happy within their skin being within the mainstream environment and Pentagon children have, and community have welcomed them. Thank you.